Are you publishing on KDP and thinking about selling public domain books on Kindle? Then today we're going to discuss that, so make sure you stay tuned. Hey, I'm Dale L. Roberts, best-selling author as well as a self-publishing advocate who wants to show you how to publish books that sell. And if you want that too, make sure, of course, that you subscribe to this channel and join me on Twitch every Monday at 12 p.m. Also, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe to me for free at twitch.tv slash self-publish and get a few freebies in the process. Stick around to the very end because I'm going to give you a full public domain resource list that's going to give you all of the resources that you could possibly need for public domain books. First of all, what are public domain books? This is content that is belonging or available to the public. In other words, there's no copyright essentially. In other words, no one specifically owns the content. It's available to the public. How can you tell if a book is available in the public domain? Well, here's what's interesting when it comes to actually producing and writing content. A copyright begins the moment that you put pen to paper or type the very first key and create some type of copyright by doing that. And it's essentially a fixed medium that can last upwards of about 70 years after the author's death. So for instance, the day I die, another 70 years beyond that, my works become public domain. And this means even if it's never published, it is officially public domain. Now there's new works that enter the public domain every January 1st. And currently works from about 1924 are starting to roll out into the market. But there's this common public domain stigma that kind of remains. It's kind of a cloud over top of things, especially if you're the traditional style author, that you're the, the person that wants to go ahead and do it all yourself. And I got to admit to you that if it wasn't until I spoke with my ever faithful assistant, Ava Fails, about it, I really felt that way too. I thought, why would you want to take somebody else's work and profit from it? Just a little bit of history. Amazon themselves actually used thousands of public domain books to fill their Kindle store when they had first launched back in 2008. So Amazon's not going to be trying to be doing anything scammy or skeezy or anything that's going to, you know, put a black eye on their business. So they obviously got into this at a very early stage. And it should be noted, this is not a get rich quick scheme. So don't think that you're going to start to publish public domain books and profit hand and fist. Because the fact of the matter is, most public domain work is really old and a lot of it's scanned and sometimes the scanning of the specific documents are somewhat illegible or kind of just beat up and tattered. So you're going to have to take it from the not the best format in the world and format it yourself. And when you're publishing public domain books, it's the same and normal publishing process that you would do through KDP. With the exception of, say, you're not really writing and editing. All you're gonna have to do is just making sure that you get the content into the best format possible. So you're gonna be responsible for formatting the manuscript, getting the book cover done, as well as getting any type of metadata and price points put in place. So how do you publish public domain books on Kindle? There has to be differentiation because let's just face it, there are a lot of people out there that are just flooding the market with a ton of public domain books with no real deviation or differentiation. So that means there's a ton of the same products over and again. We only need Think and Grow Rich so many times before it's just a little bit too much. So that's why Amazon wants to make sure that you have some differentiation and they actually say these three things are what they're looking for. You have to do one or all of them. Translation. Okay, so before you even go and take a manuscript and try to plop it over into Google Translate and get it to put it together some really raggedy looking translation, let you know right now, Amazon does not like that. They do not want you to be putting any kind of machine generated translations because it's garbage. In due time, maybe that machine learned translation might end up doing something better, but for now they don't want that. And also, if you're going to do a language, it needs to be a new language. So they don't want to have 50 iterations of Think and Grow Rich in Spanish. Uh, quite frankly, they need to have some differentiation. The next one's annotation. So think like study guides, literary criticism, detailed bios or historical context, something that you can put into this work that puts a little bit more of who you are or some insights that you have beyond the book. 
This is something that's commonly used when it comes to public domain is sometimes people will turn a public domain book into say a workbook of sorts to where maybe at the very end they have like a quiz of some sort of the chapter that was read or maybe they put some behind the scenes type things about the specific author that they know about. And the last one's going to be illustrations. You need to have at least 10 or more unique illustrations inside the book. Now again, you can use one or all of these things, but either way, illustrations is one of the ways to do this. But the illustrations must be relevant to the book. So you can't just go and grab some random thing and throw it into your book and expect everything to be hunky-dory with KDP. What does not qualify as differentiation Though they are nice to have, and this is going to include a clickable table of contents. Yeah, it's nice to have a clickable table of contents in any ebooks. I'd highly recommend you do that, but that's not differentiation. Improved formatting. Just because you priced your book for The Art of War at $19.99 while somebody else has it at $9.99 doesn't mean that it's different, doesn't mean that it's a deviation. They're nice to have. But in the same instance, it's not one of the three things I discussed before. How much does KDP pay for the public domain work? It's really rather simple. I'll just go ahead and tell you exactly what KDP is looking for. And they say the 70% royalty option is for in copyright works only. Works in the public domain or consisting primarily of public domain content are only eligible for the 35% royalty option. If you add substantial original content or publish an original translation so that your book is not primarily public domain, then it would be eligible for the 70% royalty option. Just kind of a fair warning that um, some works that are public domain in certain regions of the world are not in other regions. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you do your due diligence when you utilize any type of public domain because just because it's public domain in the US doesn't mean that it's going to be public domain in the UK. You'll wanna to make sure it's public domain worldwide if you utilize that through your KDP dashboard. Hey, I told you I was gonna give you a full public domain resource list. Actually, all you gotta do is head over to my website right now. I've got a full post put together by my ever faithful assistant, Ava Fails. When you visit dalelinks.com slash public domain, you get quite a bit of resources there. She was very helpful in putting it together. You get some additional insights when it comes to publishing public domain work on Amazon KDP. And speaking of Amazon Kindle Direct Publishing, hey, is it worth it? I mean, is KDP worth it in 2020? We're going to find out in this very next video. You're going to come on over and join me. I'm going to share all the pros and cons. It's going to be a great time. I'll see you there.